So now we are like, if you uh, follow the hand now, this is page four. So we are going to talk about electrode potentials. And this is something uh, to review your uh, gen chem tool, but there's something new as well. So uh, buckle up and see what's happened. So in electrochemistry, we use the quantities called uh, standard electrode potential to basically to, to uh, tell uh, the potential of that species of or that half cell to be reduced. Yeah, to be reduced. And then we usually communicate uh, standard electrode potential of the redox copper. Let me uh, use the... Everyone can see this uh, color, right? No one has some problem, okay. So for the redox copper or uh, or or is the oxidized species, and R is the reduced species. So if O receives n electrons and converts to be R, for example, copper two plus can receive uh, two electrons, and you get copper solid at the end. You can denote the standard electrode potential by use, using this symbol. So I'm gonna use E not, and then uh, O slash R. For example, this one, we can write as E, E not uh, copper two plus slash copper. So sometimes this is the abbreviation to uh, tell the standard electrode potential of a specific redox copper. So this is the symbol kind of thing. So what is uh, standard electrode potential? So this is the potential of an electrochemical cell constructed by putting the electrode under the standard condition, which is maybe one molar of the solution, one atmosphere of the gas and pure solid and pure liquid on the right hand side and the standard, ele uh, standard hydrogen electrode on the left hand side. Uh, standard hydrogen elect electrode, we will call it SHE, sometimes SHE, standard hydrogen electrode. Or sometimes you will see people use normal hydrogen electrode, that's the same. Normal hydrogen electrode, if you read all uh, textbook or literature, that's the same. So this is the definition of the standard electrode potential that you have learned from Jen Kim. So uh, experimentally, to find the, <clears throat> for example, the standard electrode potential of the silver, uh, silver ion, silver half cell, you will put she as the left hand side here, like this example. She is here, right? This is she. You have uh, platinum as the inner electrode, but the redox couple is actually proton and hydrogen gas and proton must be one molar and hydrogen gas must be one atmosphere and you connect it with uh, the electrode or the half cell that you want to find the standard electrode potential which in this case is silver ion silver so this is that half cell so this is the solution of the silver with one molar or strictly speaking is uh, activity is equal to one but uh, that's fine and with the so uh, silver solid so this is the cell that you're going to construct. And this is the cell shorthand notation. And if you don't know how to read or how to write this, let's uh, please go back to watch the review video or your textbook. So what's going to happen? So we already learned, like, and then you read out the vom voltage or the, from the vometer. In this case, it is 0 0.799 volt. So how to find... Uh, how to find this? So we already learned, right, that uh, the standard cell potential is equal to uh, E cathode minus E anode, but I'm gonna write it as E right minus E left, and it has to be standard condition, so I put the not sign here. So I, I leave the white space for you to take the note, so please do that. So this is E cell is equal to E right minus E left. What is E cell? E cell is what you have, what you can read it here. So this is 0 0.799 volt. E right is the things that we are want to find. We want to find which is uh, silver plus silver. 
electrode potential. And E left is what? Is she right? Is the potential of the she. But we know that the potential of the she is what? By definition, zero, right? So this is going to be 0.799 is equal to uh, electrode potential of silver ion, silver minus zero. So this is why you will get uh, silver, the electrode potential of the silver, silver ion as 0.799 uh, volt. You can put the positive, the plus plus sign as well. So this is how to find the electrode, uh, the standard electrode potential experimentally. Sometimes, if if you if you read the negative side from the voltmeter, you so the electrode potential of that your unknown uh, electrode is going to be uh, negative as well. So that's why we have to specify the side that the she is going to be on the left and your electrode is going to be on the right. All right. Any question? This is, could you explain why she is equal to zero? So that's this by definition. Yeah. So uh, actually each, uh, Every, elect every electrode will have its own potential, but we want to compare things to, we want to compare things, right? So we have to set the reference. So the electrochemist uh, decide to uh, decide to say that the she has the electrode potential of zero. That's by definition. Yeah, that's by definition, not by nature. We just define that. that, that is that answer your question? by definition. Okay. And then, so this is a uh, definition, right? And now uh, we have the table, which is called standard electrode potential table that collect uh, the common electrode potentials of the half reaction. And you can download it from the Blackboard and you should uh, bring this to the class and in your exam as well, your, I mean, your Blackboard quiz. I think your final exam, you're not gonna need this, but uh, in your quiz, you need this uh, data table. And uh, uh, what is it called? The table is quite different from what you have seen in your, from your GenChem. So from your GenChem, the table is sought by the, easy, the value of the zero of the, E zero of the cell of the standard electrode potential maybe from positive from the positive to the negative, but in this table uh, it is sort alphabetically like from A to Z. So uh, let's get used to this. So let's try to practice uh, using this table. So what is so let's find what is the what is the standard electrode potential of zinc two plus zinc half cell. So uh, type your answer. <clears throat> so think it is Z, right? So it should be at the end of your table. So I think that should be, uh, yep, minus 0.763 volt, exactly. Great job. Next one, let's do this. Iron three plus, iron two plus. What is it? And there are many forms of iron. So make sure that you choose the right one. Of course, in the exam, if I give it, I'm gonna give you the whole, like the whole thing and you have to choose the right one. Okay, so some people say plus seven seven one volt. Some people say minus point four four volt. So let's see what exactly happens. Uh, uh, that's my PDF. So if we come to iron, so there are three species of iron, right? The first one is iron two plus and iron zero or iron solid, which is minus 0.44, but uh, we, we, we are not asking this. 
I'm asking for this one, right? Ion three, ion two. So this is 0.771 volt, and another species is not this one, of course. So yeah, this is. I'm gonna test you in the in the exam, of course, right? I will maybe ask you one form of this iodine iodine form. There's a lot of forms, so you just have to choose the right one, something like this example. Yep. So it's plus 0.771 volt. The last one. Let's let's do this. Bromate, bromide. What is it? It's actually on this, like the bromine species, but choose the right one. Yep, lots of people answer it correctly. It is 1.44 volt. So you are doing good here. Okay, so this is like just be able to practice and find the values for your half reaction. <clears throat> so now we talk about the definition and the how to find from the table. So now let's uh, see how what is the meaning of this number or the properties of this number. I already said the meaning of this number, right? But uh, we can talk about it later too. So the properties of the standard electrode potential. So IUPAC defines the standard electrode potential by reduction. So everything you are seeing here is uh, based on the reduction. You cannot flip the sign and call it E oxidation. You cannot do this. It is. It may be mathematically correct, but it is not uh, conceptually correct. Like if I have the exam and you have to show your work and you do this, I'm not gonna create your. Uh, uh, answer for something like that. This is like this is similar to like we we, we say that uh, the the water can converts from uh forward, uh converts from liquid to vapor at one hundred degrees Celsius. So the water converts back from vapor to uh liquid at minus one hundred degrees Celsius. So this is not right, right? Same thing. You cannot flip the sign from the reduction to oxidation. The second point is that. The properties of the standard electrode potential is that when you multiply the whole half reaction, the E0 still or E0 still stays the same. For example, uh, for the silver ion silver half reaction, the standard electrode potential is plus 0.799 volt. But if you have to work with this, for example, three silver ion plus three electrons, uh, you get three silver and still the same. And we can approve it later in the example. And the last uh, properties of the E0 or E0 is that standard electrode potential indicates the tendency of the species to be oxidized or to be reduced. So if you have positive electrode, positive standard electrode potential, it means that you are all or your oxidized form. Oxidized form. Maybe like silver plus here. Your oxidized form is easier to be reduced than proton. If you have the positive standard electrode potential, it means that your oxidized form is easier to be reduced than the proton. For example, the silver ion, you can see this. This is plus, this is positive volt, so it's easier. But if you have negative potential, it means that you are reduced form. Let's say uh, sink from sink to sink, sink to plus thing. Your reduced form is easier to be oxidized than hydrogen gas. Right? I think yeah, sink, sink to plus sink has the negative standard electrode potential. It means that sink is oxidized. Uh, zinc is easier to be oxidized than hydrogen gas. So that's the basic definitions and properties. Now we're going to turn to the calculation. And based on my opinion, I think this is the hardest part, <laughs> almost the hardest part of the whole part for yeah, the rest is not that uh, hard. So I think you learned this before, but let's talk about it. So uh, the electrode potential up 
to this point, we talk about the electrode potential at the standard condition, which is like one molar concentration, uh, one atmosphere gas and pure solid and liquid. What if we have other concentrations? You can calculate that uh, cell, uh, that electrode reaction, uh, the, sorry, the potential of that electrode reaction by using this Nunn's equation. So that's why I write Nunn's equation governs the effect of concentration on the electrode potential. For example, if we have the general reaction, A moles of A plus B mole of B, and it receives N electron, and you get C mole of C and D mole of D as the product. Your Nernst equations can be written as this. So electrode potential at that specific uh, condition is equal to its standard electrode potential, E0, minus RT over NF, uh, RT over NF. So R is the gas constant, X.314 uh, Joule per mole Kelvin. T is your temperature. T is temperature. Do I have to write? Yeah, I'm just going to write temperature in Kelvin, of course. N is your number of electrons here. And F is the Faraday's constant. Faraday's constant. And you should be able to remember it, but I'm going to give you, yeah. What? I, yeah, Faraday's constant here. 96485 Coulomb per mole electrons. So this is the Nernst equation, but we are maybe more familiar with its form at 25 degrees Celsius. So at 25 degrees Celsius, we can just uh, plug everything, right? So it's going to be E equal to uh, E naught over X.314 T is to 98.15, right? This is uh, this uh, in Kelvin and N and F is nine six four eight five and sometimes we uh want to change from natural log to uh, decimal log i mean log base 10 so we uh, multiply it by yeah this one right log it is log 10 i'm just gonna write it and then this one as actually reaction for Shen, right some, if it is actually the, what is it called? Uh, equilibrium constant, right? But if it's in any any condition, we call it reaction quotient or heal. So I'm just gonna write uh, as heal sometime. Let me check something, okay. Heal, but yeah. And then if you multiply these together, this, this is why you get, uh, get this one. This one is valid at 25 degrees Celsius. E equal to E naught minus 0.0592 over N and log base 10 of this. The, gener the original form of the Nernst equation is written in, in uh, it's not concentration, but it is called activity. 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 <clears throat> activity is uh, some, is related to the concentration. I'm gonna uh, explain to you in the next slide. But you, do you have any question here? So the general form of the Nernst equation is uh, this one. But at 25 degrees Celsius, you plug everything and you get this one. Log base 10. Very good. So what is activity? So activity is actually the effective concentration or the concentration that it acts. Like maybe if you have a, a species of one molar, maybe it acts like it have like 0.9 molar, for example. And these two quantities, the concentration and the activity is related by something called activity coefficient. Um, yeah, I'm not doing this in the exam. I'm just going to tell you, but you have, but you should be able to know. Like if you read the advanced tech, yeah, we call this gamma. This is gamma. 
is activity coefficient. So gamma uh, x is activity coefficient of x. And usually activity coefficient decrease if your concentration increase. So this is why uh, usually activity is not equal to concentration. Activity is not equal to its concentration. But at diluted solution, you can see that your activity coefficient is close to one. If your, if your solution is dilute enough, your, act, your gamma or your activity coefficient is close to one. So this is why at diluted solution, we can just gonna use uh, concentration in term of activity. And in this course, I'm not concerned at all with the activity. You're just gonna use the, use the concentration terms just to make you like more comfortable. Any question? Any question before we are doing like five examples? If you read the advanced text, yeah, you will see that they use the activity coefficient. Yeah, so what is activity coefficient? The definition. It's hard to say, but you can find a definition from just rearrange this equation, right? So it is uh, activity. Oh, sorry. It is activity over the concentration. Uh, you can think, you can think about it as this. So if you have the beaker. And that beaker, let's say it has a lot of, uh, what is it? Let's do copper. So if your solution is very diluted, so your copper is like maybe se separate well with each other. So if you put like maybe point, maybe one millimolar of copper, so that's one millimolar of copper, each ions each copper ions is separate well from each other, so they are not influenced by each other. But imagine that if you have a lot of copper, if you have a lot of copper ions, now some of the copper ion going to be so close to each other, so that each copper ion is influenced by other ions. So that's why it cannot act freely. You can imagine like you have COVID situation and if you walk around here, you are so alone. So your activity coefficient is equal to one. But if you come back and then you have a lot of friends and then you walk together, so you cannot walk freely. You walk a little bit slower with your friends. So that's your activity coefficient is uh, lower than one. This is like the analogy of the activity coefficient. I hope this is, I hope this answers your question. If not, I think PKM will teach you later. <laughs> 